And now, Dangerous Web. Here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. Don't talk to strangers. It's a basic rule of safety every parent tells their child. But if there's a computer in your home, it's possible that your children have been talking to strangers. Tonight, we're going to show you just how dangerous it can be to let your child surf the web alone and how quickly a stranger, maybe a sexual predator, can go from chatting with your teen in cyberspace to knocking on your front door. How easily can it happen? We found out in a Dateline hidden camera investigation. We want to warn you, some of what you're about to see and hear tonight is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. This is a house on an average street in an average town. It could be your town, but there's something very different about this place. The back door's unlocked. A major crime against a child is possibly being committed here. A crime that happens more often than you'd ever imagine. This grown man is here after making a date for sex with a 14-year-old girl he met only hours earlier on the internet. Just come on in, I'm finishing getting ready, okay? Tonight, a Dateline hidden camera investigation exposes a very real threat to your children. Online sexual predators. You'll see firsthand how they find victims and seduce them. And you'll be watching as they take the next step and show up at a home where they think a minor is alone. The problem, as you'll see in our investigation, is epidemic. Just ask a group of middle school kids. Has anyone here been approached by a stranger in a chat room? These kids, ranging in age from 11 to 14, say it happens all the time. It's just disgusting stuff that they send to me just to try to get me into looking at disgusting websites. And many parents aren't as computer savvy as their children, making it tougher to protect kids from internet predators. The combination of their social naivete and our computer naivete is a dangerous combination. One in five children online in this country has been approached by adults looking for sex, according to a study funded by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. That large number doesn't surprise former FBI profiler and leading child sex crimes expert Ken Lanning. It seems to be a bottomless barrel of cases. You go out there and no matter what you do, there just seems to be more and more of these individuals. Internet predators are very good at, at convincing you that they're, they're your friend. Shelley Ryling of Danbury, Connecticut, had no idea about the danger lurking online for her 13-year-old niece, Chrissy, an honor student, altar girl, and co-captain of her cheerleading team. In May 2002, Chrissy told her aunt she was going to the mall to meet a friend. Instead, she met up with a stranger she'd met online, a 24-year-old married man named Saul Dos Reis. Prosecutors charge he took her for a ride in his car, sexually abused her, and then strangled her. Dos Reis was convicted of first-degree manslaughter. When I opened up the door and I saw the minister, I knew. And I looked for Chrissy and she wasn't there and I knew they were going to tell me that she had been killed. How do sexual predators find children like Chrissy on the internet? by going to a chat room like this one, scanning the profiles looking for a victim. Then they'll instant message that child. Very often, they'll get a message back. Usually, the chats start off friendly. Later, they'll get sexual. And finally, the predator will try to convince a child to meet in person. Teenagers are rebellious. Teenagers are curious. Teenagers can have a strong interest in sex and all these characteristics. And so what many of these offenders are, are taking advantage of are these characteristics characteristics of teenagers. Laws differ from state to state, but generally it's against the law to use the internet to entice a minor to engage in sexual activity. It's also illegal to transmit obscene matter to a person under 16. The fact that you use something like a computer and the internet and that technology crosses state lines that can also make it a federal violation. Law enforcement agencies like the FBI and U.S. Customs have made catching internet predators a high priority, but they say the problem is just too big. Enter a group called Perverted Justice, a kind of online vigilante organization whose mission is to do what it believes law enforcement doesn't always have the resources to do, make a full-time job of going after internet predators. And they do it by posing as kids online. This is what a 13-year-old girl looks like. 
At Perverted Justice. <laughs> At any <laughs> given moment, one of Perverted Justice's 25 volunteers, some who say they were victims themselves of sexual abuse, troll internet chat rooms, usually through AOL and Yahoo, waiting to be approached by a predator. Are these chat rooms really that creepy? Oh, they're just loaded. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, Half the times we have to close down some of the windows. There's so many guys hitting on us that'll crash our machines. While perverted justice has no authority to arrest the potential predators it identifies, it sometimes aids in the criminal prosecution of those men. But many in law enforcement strongly oppose any civilian group conducting sting operations. Nevertheless, perverted justice exposes these individuals by posting their picture, phone number, and a copy of their sexual chat on its website. As a result, the men's family, neighbors, and employers are often notified by website visitors. Why is this not entrapment? Well, it's not entrapment. First of all, we're not a legal entity. Secondly, we're sitting in a chat room. We're not, we're not starting anything. They're having a conversation with us of their own free will. Then, perverted justice volunteers will often engage in sexually explicit chats, coming on to a would-be predator to see if he'll take the bait. If you don't trust me, that's cool. It's one thing to chat online. The danger is far greater when it becomes person to person. So how many of these internet stalkers would actually make a date and show up to have sex with a teen? In other words, commit statutory rape. We decided to find out. More than a few sexual predators believe there's a minor waiting alone in this house. But they're in for a big surprise. We've got our hidden cameras rolling. So stick around and wait to see who knocks on our door. It looks like we got another one. To follow the trail of an internet predator prowling for children, from seduction in a chat room to a face-to-face -face meeting, you need three things. A realistic setting, someone proficient in the teen speak of the internet and a way to record it all. This is real time. All this right, is so real time. File. This is happening right now. Save as. We rented this house in a middle-class neighborhood on a main street far from any school. Our technicians rigged the house with hidden cameras inside and out. I bet that's him. The and we enlisted the help of volunteers from Perverted Justice, who make it their mission to expose some of the estimated 50,000 predators nationwide said to be trolling the Internet at any given time. Volunteers like 21-year-old Dell. Protecting little children from people who would destroy their lives. It's just such a worthy cause. Dell and other volunteers like 38-year-old Frag, or using their undercover names, go online posing as 12, 13, or 14-year-olds, using a picture that is unmistakably underage. Some volunteers pretend to be girls and some boys. Either way, they never make the first contact. Instead, they wait to be seduced. Now, how explicit do you have to be to lure these guys in? Well, we don't really have to lure them. They'll come to us. We go into these chat rooms. I haven't said a word to anybody. I'm sitting in the room, and the IMs start popping up, and they start coming on. Sure enough, in a matter of minutes, the online chat becomes sexually explicit. This man, screen name Ed in NYC, thinking he's talking to a 13-year-old, says, you feeling horny right now? Another me for magic NY asks, are you a virgin? The girl says, yeah. And then this 33-year-old proceeds to turn on his webcam, expose himself, then masturbate in front of a girl he believes is 13. Right then and there, this man may have committed a federal crime by using the Internet to transmit obscene matter to a person he believed to be underage. Other predators send pictures of themselves, then give their phone number, hoping for a call. Hey, is this John? Hey, it's Mandy. Dell, now posing as a 13-year-old girl, does exactly that. She tells the predator her parents aren't home and that it'd be okay for him to come to her house. I was just making sure you were for real because I wanted to know you really wanted this. There would be dozens of sexually graphic online chats intended for children. Chats so disgusting we can't even begin to show you. There would also be picture exchanges and phone calls. But how many of these men would be willing to make a date and then be bold enough to walk in the door? 
We didn't have to wait long to find out, and we caught it all on our hidden cameras. Meet 35-year-old Steve, known on the internet as SR8219. He's a married man with children. Just come on in and sit at the counter. I gotta finish getting dressed. Dell, posing as a 14-year-old, invites him in. And even though there really isn't a 14-year-old in the house, this man still may be committing a crime, according to sex crimes expert Ken Lanning. The federal law makes it pretty clear there doesn't have to be an actual child there. And as far as Steve is concerned, there's a real 14-year-old in this house. As for why he's here, after we read you part of his online chat, it will be pretty clear. You on the pill? No. You wear condoms? If you want me to, but I'm sterile. Okay, then you don't have to wear a condom if you don't want to. But before we have sex, I want you to make me c He then assaults the girl with chat about oral and anal sex and even asks a series of deeply personal questions like, when do you get your period? And another offensive question about her personal hygiene. Law enforcement has a name for this kind of guy, a potentially dangerous predator who goes from a chat room to a real-life meeting intent on an encounter with a child. They're called travelers. He starts to communicate online, and then he is going to travel to where the child is, or he's going to try to get the child to travel to where he is, also they can engage in actual sexual activity with the child. But today, Steve won't have a chance for sex with a 14-year-old. Instead, he'll be meeting me. He seems to think I'm a police officer. I haven't told him yet I'm a television reporter, and at this point, he has no idea he's being videotaped. Mm -hmm. I knew. You knew what? <clears throat> exactly what was going on. Just take your hands out of your pockets for me. Oh, you don't have to put them up. Okay, no yeah. problem. I knew what was going on. I'm not stupid. It's pretty clear that Steve thinks he was caught up in a police sting. He says he was just coming over to check it out. So you were yeah, obviously suspicious in the beginning. Of course I am. I'm always suspicious. Always? Do you do this a lot? No, I, no, this is the first time I've actually did show up to see what was going on. And you expect me to believe that? Uh, yes, I do. Do you have children? Yes, I do. And how would you feel if one of your children was 13 or 14 years old, that child was home alone, chatting with somebody on the internet who ultimately uh, came over with no parent at home? How would you feel about that as a parent? I'd be pretty pissed off. Right. You'll hear more from Steve later. Right now, there's another man walking down our driveway. He's the one who turned on his webcam to put on a little sex show. Now he's in our kitchen. He's 33-year-old Musti, me for magic, New York, and he's expecting to hook up with a 13-year-old virgin. Just sit down at the counter for a minute, and I'll be down in a second. Just hours earlier, after exposing himself online, he tells the girl he wants oral sex before he takes her virginity. And if that's not disgusting enough, he continues to titillate himself by asking intimate questions, like the size of her breasts and other questions too disturbing for us to mention. So you talk this way to all your friends on the internet? Yes. About I, all these sex acts and in this Yes, way. and everybody talking like that, and they have a web uh, site in over there too. So this is just a game to you? Yes, it's a just game. But is it a I, game I, when you send an obscene video? Now it sounds like you exposed yourself on a webcam. But I, I'm telling you. Did we, you or did you not? I have a webcam too, and right. the other people have a webcam too, and we're playing. You're playing? We, yeah, we see each other and we're playing. Yeah, what game were you playing on the webcam? It's up to you, I don't know. Our undercover operation has only been up and running for two hours, and already two men who chatted graphically about sex online and then made a date have come into the house looking for a young girl home alone. Watch our hidden cameras. You're about to see a lot more. This 30-year-old man, screen name Dark Hero, showed up expecting a date with a 13-year-old girl. It turns out he has a history of mental illness with possible suicidal tendencies. So we've disguised his identity but included him in our report to illustrate how there's no telling what kind of unstable character might show up for a meeting with a minor. Listen as we read a little of what he said online to her just hours earlier. I want to be your master so badly. I've only been with one guy. That's okay. I'll tell you exactly what to do. You'll be fine. Are you going to pose nude for me, sweetheart? Mm, maybe if you're really good. <laughs> Just sit down at the counter. I want to finish getting dressed, okay? Sit down where? At the counter. Okay, where the light is? Yeah. Okay. But instead of meeting his fantasy girl, I walk in. 
You thought it was a good idea to come visit a 13-year-old girl for what reason? Just to hang out. Just a lonely guy, you know? I'm not, I don't mean anybody any harm. Have you ever done this before? No. You'll hear much more from Dark Hero later. So what kind of man seduces a minor and then shows up in person? Former FBI profiler Lanning says it's a man who can't control himself. Once these fantasies become fueled by the discussions with the child, then in a sense the hook is in. This individual then is committed to this and then is drawn to trying to turn these fantasies that they've spent so much time into a reality. Our little house in the suburbs has become the destination for a parade of potential predators. In the first eight hours of our investigation, eight men show up, one after the other, from early afternoon into the evening, none of them realizing their every move is being recorded. Each man made a date on the Internet and believes a minor is home alone and open to the idea of sex. Remember this man, screen name Ed in NYC? He's 34-year-old Eddie, and when he shows up at the house, he tries something none of the others did. Before he'll come into the kitchen, he comes up with a scheme to insulate himself from possible criminal charges, and he tries to get the girl to play along. Okay, listen, just say something to me. What do you want me to say? I say, Rachel, you're 19 years old, right? I'm not, though. You know I'm not. I don't know that. I told you I was 14. You saw it. You said back to me. What are you talking about? No, no, no. Not as far as I know. As far as I know, you're 19 years old, right? But I... But I Rachel? Can you read between the lines? When I walk in, Eddie admits he was trying not to incriminate himself. My intentions are not anything, so I just want to protect myself, that's all. But she told you on the internet she was 14. 19, she wrote on the internet. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. On the internet? Yes. You want to stick with that story? I just, that's what I thought she wrote. You want, you want to see the um, transcript? I'm sure you have it. The fact that Eddie is so cunning doesn't surprise law enforcement experts. Not only are they not stupid, but they're probably above average intelligent. But they can be a wide variety of individuals, but a lot of them are well-educated individuals. We'll get back to Eddie later. There are more men on the way. The second day of our investigation turns out to be just as busy as the first. Eight hours, eight men. Some come looking not for girls, but for boys. This is 35-year-old Craig, screen name 34 going on 17. He's here to meet a 14-year-old boy. Am I going to jail? You're not going to jail. I know, I, I, it was, as you can tell, it wasn't something I really, you know, I was just gonna hang out. I really wasn't gonna do anything, to be honest with you. We talk, I know I said things on there, but, I've never done anything like that, and I was just bored. Like he that. sure didn't seem bored earlier online when he tried to coax a teenager into the shower. No, shower with me. I, I think I, I got to shower me too, so let's shower together. I, I know. I know what I said. I, I, you know. you know, I don't understand, though. I mean, if, 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 if you're the parent of a kid... It's completely wrong. I know it is. Even just to even talk like that. I know. Believe me, I know. Okay, this whole this is stupid. So many men start showing up for the dates they made online, a kind of traffic jam develops. This guy heads to the back door, looks inside, sees another man is already there, and decides to make a run for it. But 20-year-old Esteban, known online as Skatey Pie, walks right into the kitchen and waits, although not for long. I asked him about his online chat with who he thought was a young girl. Why don't you tell me exactly what you talked about? About smoking, about sex. About sex? Yeah. We cut short our interview because while we were talking to Esteban, yet another man is at our door. We asked Esteban to wait in the basement. Come with me for a second. In two and a half days, 18 men walked down this driveway thinking they were going to meet a 12, 13, or 14-year-old home alone. All of them chatted online, often talking graphically about sex, spoke on the phone with a decoy, sent a photo, and made a date to meet at the house. But almost all the men said they weren't really here to have sex, and most shared yet another explanation. I've never done anything like that. How many times have you done this? Never before in my life. Do you do this often? No. How often do you do this sort of thing? No, not very often at all. Have you ever done this before? No. 
Do you do this often? Never. I've never done this and never will I do it again. I, I don't know what, what even came over me to come do this. But perhaps the most creative excuses came from 23-year-old Mike, known online as MUXACB2003. He traveled from another state to meet a 14-year-old. At first, Mike says he's at the wrong address. This isn't 554? Yeah, no, this is not 554. Then he says someone was impersonating him online. I have no idea what this is. Either way, he says, it's all a big mix-up. Explain to me exactly how you ended up here. I mean, you just walked up the sidewalk and walked into this house because, what, you thought it looked like a nice house? Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand why that story doesn't make sense? After a few minutes, Mike decides to come clean. Because I was thinking. You weren't thinking? No. So all that stuff you told me earlier is a lie? Yes. Do you want to tell me the truth now? Yes. What happened? He admits he came here hoping for sex with a 14-year-old. Did you bring condoms today? You did? Yeah. So what does that say about your intent? It was wrong, it was stupid, I was immature. Remember, so far, these men don't realize they're being videotaped, much less that they'll turn up on Dateline. I am a correspondent for Dateline NBC, but they're about to find out. You can't put me on, on TV. Returning to our story, you've seen how 18 men, after trolling through chat rooms looking for young teenagers, showed up for what they thought was going to be a date with a minor. They're about to find out their date is with Dateline. Here again, Chris Hansen. Just come in and set the counter. In two and a half days, most of these men likely uh. broke state and federal laws by coming to this house to sexually violate a 12, 13, or 14-year-old. So not, not much. Yeah. Some talked yeah. probably because they thought I was with law enforcement, although I never pretended to be a cop. Well, you want to tell me why you really came over? I really wanted to just take him to the movies. In fact. But none had you any really idea our thing. hidden cameras were going to expose them before a national story. audience. When we told them, okay, most headed for the door, like Steve, okay. the married man with children. I'm Chris Hansen of Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on grown-ups Okay. On the internet. Go ahead. I am leaving. All right, because, go ahead. You know, and you don't have my permission to put me on tape either. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story. You can't put me on, on TV. But some wanted a chance to try to explain themselves. Remember 34 year old Eddie? He was the one who thought he'd found a way to cover himself legally. As far as I know, you're 19 years old, right? When I confront him, he's ready with a story. Good. He says he's a TV so, producer doing research. Where are you a television producer? I work independently right now. Yeah. You know, it's ironic because I work in television too, with Dateline NBC. Okay. At first, this television producer appears a bit camera shy, but then he decides to open up. I haven't done anything wrong at all. Do you go into the transcripts? No. A time and I time again, everything that was said. Picture this. Everything. Picture this. You lying back, I straddle your chest. It, it sounds like you were looking to have a sexual experience with this girl, Rachel, who we were talking about on the internet. But I don't know what other conclusions you can search, You can search me for a condom. I don't have one on me. I wouldn't have sex without one. Eddie thinks he's pretty smooth, and he's not quite finished. He's got yet another excuse why he's not really here for sex. Besides, she's supposedly a virgin, so she's never had sex anyway, so I certainly wouldn't want to be the first. Kind of sounds like you might have been excited about the fact that she was a virgin in here. No, I don't think so. You don't see that in there. And in fact, all you see is just little test scenarios. So For the record, around. it appears Eddie has worked as a TV producer. I'm very interested in your story. I think it's a great thing that you're doing. I think uh, it's something that you should certainly do more and more and, uh, and bag people left and right. Thanks for the pat on the back, Eddie. Not, Meanwhile, when it comes to excuses, law enforcement experts say they've heard them all. It's not uncommon for these individuals when caught dead to right to try to minimize and downplay and to rationalize and justify and offer these excuses. But when 30-year-old Dark Hero learns he was going to be part of our report, he tries a different approach. 
Remember, we've disguised him because of his history of mental illness and possible suicidal tendencies. I'm ashamed. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean anybody any harm. Then he reveals something that, after investigation, appears to be true. I'm a schizophrenic man. I, I'm, I'm supposed to see my doctor today. All right, perhaps you should go see him. I'm just getting my life in order. You're going to ruin my life. You're the one who made the decision to come here. But I didn't know I was going to wind up on television. What would you have done with a 13-year-old girl? I probably just would have said hello and how you doing, and we maybe we would have taken a ride in the car, and that's it. We you were going to take her for a ride in the car? Maybe. Oh, I just got out of a mental institution a few months ago. I'm just a guy looking for a girlfriend. That's it. You're going to take a guy who's looking for a girlfriend and put him on TV and say, oh, here's a pedophile. That's what you're going to do, right? Because I, because I came to meet a 13-year-old, even though I didn't do anything. I think that's ridiculous. I think your story is a piece of shit. It turns out Dark Hero has a long history of mental illness, and he has a history with law enforcement. In fact, his former girlfriend was granted an order of protection against him, an order which he violated. He later pleaded guilty to second-degree harassment and criminal contempt. Yet here he is, able to chat online, make a date, and show up for a possible sexual encounter with a 13-year-old. While virtually every man who made a date to commit statutory rape showed up at our house, there was another who never made it in the door, although he came awfully close. He's a man in a position of trust, 24-year-old Ryan Hogan, screen name Ryan4686, a New York City firefighter. Want to call me? He wants to talk. After spending hours engaged in an obscene chat, sometimes from the firehouse, he makes a plan to come over to have sex with our 14-year-old. But as he drives by the house, he phones. He's having second thoughts and cancels, telling our decoy she's too young. He went back to saying there was immoral and illegal and everything else. But the real reason may have been something else entirely. He goes home, gets back online, and says he saw this. A police car coincidentally parked next door to our house. But even that doesn't stop him. He gets comfortable again, turns on his webcam, exposes himself, and masturbates, all while wearing his New York City firefighter sweatshirt. Yeah, it's obscene. It's obscene. And then, unbelievably, he says he's going to come by the house again. He never makes it. So we go looking for him. Hey, Ryan. Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. And we're doing a story about uh, adults in chat rooms on the Internet. At first, firefighter Ryan says he thought the girl was 19. Then he decides to come clean. The reality is this. You had a conversation with somebody who said they were 14 years old. It was a very explicit sexual conversation. You got in your car and you drove by the house where she said she was home alone with no parents. Right. That's all true, right? Yes. But did I stop? No. Did I make the right, did I, in the end, make a, the right decision as what not to do? Yes, I did. You said that you had every intent of showing up at this house, except that you saw a marked police car parked next door. I honestly, I had driven, before I saw the marked police car, I made the decision not to stop. I really did. But what about his lewd performance on the webcam in front of someone he thought was 14? And then afterwards, you turned on the webcam and transmitted this picture. That was not that was not supposed to be transmitted. Of okay. yourself exposing yourself. That was not transmitted. For the record, I was talking to another person at the time. I did not intend for her to see that. You didn't intend for her to see that? No, sir, I did not. Somebody else was viewing, the, viewing that at the time. But if you look at the firefighter's chat log, he asks our decoy first if she sees the picture and then if she liked it. Is this appropriate behavior for no, a New York City firefighter? No, sir, it is not. For any adult for to have any, this kind of a any, conversation with somebody adult, who says no. they're a 14 year old girl home no, alone? No, sir, it is not. Then what are you doing, Ryan? Um, I made a mistake at the time. I made the judgment call to correct that mistake. Is there anything else you want to say about this? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Okay, people got to use their heads. People should know better. Um, I, I made a mistake. So what happens now to all these men who were so clearly caught in the act? 
to start, all of them were exposed by Perverted Justice, the online watchdog group. All the men's photos, phone numbers, and chat logs were posted on its website. The firefighter was arrested and charged with using the Internet to attempt to solicit a minor for sex and attempting to transmit obscene matter to a person under the age of 16. Hogan has pled not guilty. This man, who told us he was schizophrenic, was admitted to a psychiatric hospital. So how would you react if 18 strangers showed up in your neighborhood in just two days? Probably a lot like these parents. Almost too angry for words. We assembled a group of parents who live just a matter of miles from our hidden camera house. They all told me they were aware that computer predators are out there, but none was prepared to see what happened in their own backyard. Personally, I'm totally shocked that that many people responded, which just shows me that it's not something rare. It's not the one in a million guy out there. They're all over. They're all over. And yet there is nothing to make them stand out in a crowd. Everyday members of the community. What frightens me more is that these guys are guys you might know in your life. Mm -hmm. right. That might be your neighbors, or you might socialize with these men and not know it. Do you think that anything like this could happen to any of your children? I do. Yeah, well, I do. They're out there. I do, because they're very inventive. So inventive that kids might not even sense there's danger. And it's scary because I think sometimes kids think that, uh, you know, it's all a game and they're just, you know, playing along and then they don't realize how all of a sudden it becomes somebody at your back door. I, I think it's very easy for children to give out information unwittingly. But if seeing what these men did wasn't frightening enough for these parents, hearing what these middle school kids tell me they experience online may be more shocking. Has anyone here had a stranger say anything you felt uncomfortable about that was inappropriate? Has anyone ever tried to lure you into going to an inappropriate website? Yeah, they give you the link and say, like, um, come here to view my naked pictures. And like most kids, they don't always tell their parents. How many of you, after having been approached or having a scary experience in a chat room, have gone to their parents right away to tell them what happened? Nobody? Why not? Because we're scared of what they'll say. Like, if we'll get in trouble or yell at me or ground me from not going online ever again. There is a disconnect between parents and children here. There's a huge disconnect. Terry Schroeder, founder and CEO of iSafe, a nonprofit foundation that educates children across the country on internet safety, says parents and kids need to work as a team. I do not encourage any parent after hearing this interview to say, I'm getting that computer out of here, because you will severely handicap your child educationally, socially. Instead, Schroeder says parents need to educate themselves about online dangers and create open communication where a child feels safe talking about inappropriate situations online. Take the parenting skills that you use in real life and apply them in cyberspace. It's very simple. If something is going on, talk to your child about it. If your child comes to you, listen to them. Yes. In fact, Schroeder confirms what these kids told us. Most children are afraid to tell their parents about scary encounters online. If they go tell their parents, their parents may not believe them, and then now they're going to get in trouble. And nine times out of ten, what we tell the kids and what we tell the parents, it's usually not the kid's fault. They're innocent in this. They're, they're kid is a victim of a crime. Correct. Basically. A sex crime committed by predators who know exactly which of the kid's buttons to push. It may be attention and affection. For another child, it may be gifts. For a lot of teenagers, it's romance. Just somebody who will pay give you attention. this romance, pay attention to you, tell you how pretty you are, how nice you are, or whatever it is. There's one guy right there coming right to the door. These kids thought they were pretty hip to dangerous strangers online, but they weren't such know-it-alls. Once, with their parents' permission, I showed them the results of our investigation. So this is just a game, dude. Yes, it's a just game. 
That was all like it's, real. That oh, all actually totally happened. Real. I don't like it. Creepy. Pathetic. Freaky. Disgusting. Scary. Weird. Reality. Wrong. Show your kids that you do care enough and that they will not be penalized if something happens. And also, um, be willing to learn from your kids. You may learn a lot from them as it pertains to technology. Based upon the fact that we all have computers in our homes, do we then have the responsibility of almost being a spy or a cop to see what the kids are doing on the all computer? Yes. I've always done that. But if parents think they can completely protect their kids by installing standard software or setting ground rules, think again. We found ways to bend those rules and stuff like that. So you know how to get around that stuff? Yeah. Have you ever done it yourself? Yeah. Even though your parents have said don't do that? Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> Meet 11-year-old Laomi Wright. She's become so good at getting around the rules, her mother is ready to throw out the computer. Let's put it this way, she's not using the computer anymore. You thought you were being a responsible parent. Right. And doing just about everything you could to make sure your daughter was safe on the internet. Right, plus uh, she gave me her word. And she wouldn't talk to people that she didn't know, so. In spite of all that, your daughter was still talking to a stranger via instant messaging. Right, it's pretty scary, I can tell you that. To help solve Michelle's problem, we enlisted the help of Detective Mike Sullivan, author of Safety Monitor, How to Protect Your Kids Online. The first thing he noticed, Michelle had the computer in the basement, an out-of-the-way place where a child can operate unsupervised. Put it in a, in a public room, you know, right off the kitchen, um, dining room, you know, basically as you're going about your normal house chores, you're making dinner, you can look over and see the screen and check on what your child's doing. Next, Detective Sullivan suggested setting up layers of defense, starting with internet service providers like MSN, Earthlink, or AOL, which all provide some type of parental control. Michelle has AOL, and although she had set up the controls, she wasn't using them correctly. AOL has recently updated its protective controls, making it tougher for kids to outsmart. Everything is going to function through AOL, and then they're going to monitor what she's doing from there. Next, our expert downloads WatchWrite software that will allow Michelle to read all of Laomi's instant messages and chat room conversations. So you can keep an eye on what she's doing, even if she changes her password on you. This program's still going to read it and let you see what she's been doing online. If reading all her daughter's online messages seems too intrusive or time-consuming, the detective has another suggestion. Filtering software that stops Laomi from sending out personal information, like her home address or phone number. The software would also detect a predator trying to make contact with Laomi and then automatically send Michelle an email to warn her. So if your daughter's at home and something goes wrong, the software, Cyber Sentinel's going to send you a message at work saying, you know, you might want to call home, and it will actually tell you who the user online was, what was the inappropriate statement. So she said some uh, naughty words, or someone said something of a predatory nature to her, you're actually going to see it in the mail. And our expert has one more suggestion for Michelle. Software that will record Laomi's every move on the computer without her daughter knowing it. So the program is like a VCR showing you, hey, wait a second, this is what my child's doing That's online. That's great, look at that. This program is actually going to come in and say, wait a second, they tried to sneak a program by you, but you can still check them out. Our expert says each program is very user-friendly and costs about $40. And it's clear both Michelle and the detective think it's worth it. There's no silver bullet that's going to take care of everything. What you can get to is a state of peace of mind as a parent, that I've done everything I can do to protect my child while they're on the computer in my house. I guess all the protective software in the world will not substitute for a good relationship between a parent and a child. No, an active, involved parent is more than any match for any predator that's out there right now. Now that our expert has installed and set up tough protective measures, Michelle is ready to let Laomi back on the computer. Have you learned your lesson? Yes. That's Dateline for now. Join all of us at NBC News next time for another edition of Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. Good night.